I have really just two prayer points I want us to pray today. You'll notice that there's actually, there's, one, there's just one cry, really, that we make as Christians. The Bible says in Matthew 3, verse 2, that John the Baptist would go out and he would cry, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And if this was just a message that he was meant to, pre- he was meant to preach just until Jesus came, then you would not find in Matthew 4, verse 17, the Bible says after Jesus was tempted by the devil that he went out preaching and what he would say is repent for the kingdom of his heaven is at hand. And it's only that you find out after that that the people were not comprehending what does it mean to repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does that mean? And so in Matthew 5, Jesus would begin the Sermon on the Mount and he would start unfolding revelation of what the kingdom was. And then he will start to teach in parables so that we could start to understand. But as we pray for Nigeria, I want us to understand that one cry. That as a nation, we shall turn back. We shall turn back and look unto the kingdom of heaven. Reach out to the kingdom of heaven. That we shall live a life that reaches for the standard of heaven. So when in 2 Chronicles 7, we cry out and we, we, we use this prayer point that when my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, it it is an acknowledgement that you have to turn back to the kingdom of heaven. You must look to that kingdom. If Nigeria is going to get to the place that God has purposed and decreed that it shall, we must turn back. We must turn back to the things of God. We must look again to the kingdom of heaven. We must understand what that kingdom is and we must set the standards of our life in accordance with the kingdom of heaven. If we can just begin to speak in the spirit that Lord, the Lord God would give us the humility required as a people to turn back. To turn back and to look on him. There are two levels of understanding. One, we must know that we need to turn. But we must understand where it is we are turning to. Jesus had to start unfolding what it is that the kingdom of heaven really was. So that we would not fall into error. God, our prayer now is that this nation shall come under a divine encounter similar to what Paul did on the road to Damascus that he is turning back Paul was not an unreligious man he was not a man that would not even call himself uh, fail to call himself a believer he was a Jew he believed he was serving God it took an encounter for him to know that this thing that I have been serving is not him as Pastor Jim and I was saying when well renowned in Nigeria the the world knows there's no other country with as many churches per square meter but what are we facing who are we facing that the wisdom and the knowledge of God shall, shall pierce into every sphere of influence in this nation shall sp- pierce into the education system. It shall pierce into the family. It shall pierce into the life of our children. It shall pierce into our political systems. It shall pierce into our governance and our leadership mindsets. It shall pierce into our entertainment systems. It shall pierce into our culture. You know, I can always mainly use the, the entertainment system as an example when I'm talking about this because I have enough interface with it to understand what's taking place. 
But it's one of the things that is, I think is, it's happening not just in that, but it's happening all over the, the, the spheres of influence in Nigeria. Is that we find ourselves conforming to what seems to be working elsewhere. And so because our entertainment system is growing and it is growing rapidly, but one of the things that is causing it to grow, according to our eyes, is the influence of things external. So the cinema system hasn't seemed to work in the entertainment and film industry. And so you've seen streaming come in, which means Netflix has come to Nigeria, Prime Video has come to Nigeria, but they don't just come with their money. They come with their value systems. And so you find people conforming and now I know of a show in itself that was actually built with Christian values in the first place. And now that they're doing a second season with Netflix, they have been commissioned to institute and to, in, um, to include lesbian characters and all those kind of things. And they are conforming because the money is there. And so if we are going to turn as a nation, we must know what we are turning to. We must know what the values we have are. It's not all that looks good that is gold and silver. The second prayer point I have is understanding the importance. Culture is a good thing. But when culture begins to defame your relationship with God or cause compromise, it is problem. You see two places in the scripture. In, um, in John 3, verse 1 to 2, and I saw this picture painted and it was so marvelous. We have the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus comes at night and he speaks to Jesus and he asks Jesus questions, but he says something very clear. He says, we know that you must be of God because none can do the things that you're doing. But he came at night because there were so many pressures in and around him for where he had grown up as a Pharisee. Not just as a Pharisee, but as a chief Pharisee, as, as one who was a leader. And so he was so embedded in a culture that the culture that, that even when he saw God, he could not turn. Because he thought, I need to maintain these cultural systems. You see the same thing with Gideon in Judges 6. God tells him that he should go and he should, the angel tells him he should go and pull down the idols that his father has built. But because he fears what his family will say, what his culture will say, and what they will do to him, he goes, but he does it at night. We cannot subject ourselves so much to the culture that we turn from God. That if there's anything in any place in the cultures that we have built and the systems that we have built, one as a nation, but even as a church, there are religious systems that we have so gotten used to that they have become idols and they are not God. That as a nation, we will turn. As a nation, we will not fear and we will be ready to uproot whatever the Lord calls us to uproot. God said to Jeremiah, do not fear whatever I call you to uproot, you shall uproot. Whatever I call you to pull down, you shall pull down. Do not fear their faces. We must be ready to stand stubbornly before the faces of men and do what the Lord has said. Because this nation is called to far more. But it needs to be marked by righteousness and holy living. That this nation shall be known for righteousness and holy living. But the example must be set by us. Willing to walk in the ways of God. God, we submit this nation before you. We submit ourselves before you. For a nation is built by man. Israel came from one man, the nation. And so it is not by crying out alone, but it is by individually saying that we shall walk with righteousness and by holy living, according to the standard of God. There's men that make up nations, so we must learn to be the men that build a nation that is worthy of the call of God upon it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ.
Amen. Amen.